Hello again, this is Janet Simmons, and in this video, I'll help you explore some of the issues surrounding adopting technology for workplace learning. There are a few myths surrounding e-learning. Can you recall some of the things that you've heard about e-learning that you believe are true or others don't? Or can you recall what people told you about online learning but found weren't true? Over the years, technology in the workplace has had its critics and advocates. Where do you stand on these issues? Let's look at the e-learning programs. Some of the criticisms of technology used in workplace learning come from the history or legacy of viewing e-learning as ineffective and expensive. There are two distinct criticisms and need to be addressed separately. Let's look at money first. Programs cost money and there's a perception that many e-learning programs are expensive. As we saw in the module on ROI, we need to take into account the cost of e-learning development, including the management teams, designers, online facilitators, just to name a few. Yes, creating useful and engaging e-learning programs takes a number of resources, including time, hiring the right people, and using or buying the right software programs to create e-learning that works. There is also a belief that some technologies, such as social networks, are a novelty or can't be used for learning or aren't practical. This may stem from the lack of training and support for learning with technology. Often learning a new type of technology is not supported in the workplace. There may be little training, perhaps because of the lack of people to help with training, lack of time for training, or even a belief that the technology is intuitive and training isn't needed. We've talked a lot about actual technology. Now let's turn our attention to the learning environment. Critics of e-learning believe that technology is a means of delivery rather than contextualize the training. Thus, the burden is on the learner. One of the critiques of e-learning is it lacks a social component. Learners are often learning in isolation at their desks with no interaction with other e-learners. Finally, there is a rather long history of point and click activities in e-learning. This may be because at one time it was considered innovative and engaging. Some organizations haven't progressed beyond that and do not create e-learning environments that include social engagement. This could be based on technology choices used in e-learning. For example, the choice of programs affects e-learning experience. Imagine this course without any videos. Do you think you would learn less, equally, or more if there weren't any videos? This course may not be as effective without videos or without Blackboard, which is another technology. Many of these criticisms are valid, but there's also people who support e-learning programs. These advocates of e-learning in the workplace believe that more people within an organization can be reached quicker and with less expense compared to face-to-face -face learning. This is particularly true if employees have to travel to the training site. This means they will spend more time away from the workplace and accrue travel expenses that are passed along to the company. Training modules can be just in time or support systems, such as online company libraries or other repositories. These could be used to support learning over time. We'll talk more about that next week. Technology also allows students to learn visually, often with the use of videos, which for some learners is more effective than face-to-face -face learning. If you recall, one of the e-learning criticisms is a lack of social connection with other learners. Here at UOIT, we're well aware that this just isn't true. In the AEDT classroom, there's a strong sense of community that is not hindered by the learner's geographic location. We can see the lack of social connectedness isn't a technology problem, but a lack of instructional design skills or perhaps a lack of company support for social connections and training. We've looked at only a few of the arguments for and against using technology for learning. I'm sure if you look at your own experiences as an adult learner, you would recall more pros and cons. Now it's your turn. What do you think about using technology for workplace learning? What are some of the considerations for an organization before deciding to use technology-mediated learning? What would your group consider for the PBL? And don't forget there's often a gray area. No technology workplace learning solution is perfect for your company, even if you meet the needs of all the current and future learners. 
have a healthy budget, and have excellent 24-hour customer support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the tutorial.